All right, great. Thanks a lot for that. My presentation would have died uh, in a couple of minutes if, I, if he hadn't done that. <laughs> so that's good. Um, all right, so going, getting back to what I was saying, uh, I want to keep this conversational. So if you have any questions or if you want me to slow down, uh, you can just walk up to that mic in the middle and uh, uh, speak up. Uh, two of my colleagues have joined me here today, Erin Friedman, right there, Senior Marketing Manager, Amazon Associates, and Angela Pack, uh, Marketing Manager, Amazon Associates. Uh, between the two of them, Erin and Angela have a wealth of information on all things associates, um, so I highly recommend catching up with them later on if you have any questions. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, firstly, a quick show of hands. How many of you are already associates? Okay. And how many aren't? Just real quick. <laughs> so it looks like 50-50. Uh, so I'll take a few minutes to go over the associates program, what we're all about, and um, we'll go from there. Um, well, okay, associates is Amazon's own affiliate marketing program, and we're one of the world's oldest and most successful marketing programs online. Um, so basically, the, work, uh, the way it works is this. You place Amazon links and widgets on your site. People follow the links to Amazon. And uh, when a purchase is made within a 24-hour time period, starting off from that first click, then you, the publisher, gets a referral uh, for that purchase. And the exact referral percentage varies anywhere from 4% for electronics uh, up to 20% sometimes for digital products. Uh, so for example, if you sell an MP3 uh, product, uh, it might get you 20%, so that's pretty high. Um, and one thing, one thing to point out is that Amazon is successful when you, the publisher, is successful. So we've devised a whole range of products uh, for you to choose from so that you can drive uh, profitable and more productive uh, uh, traffic to Amazon. Uh, so let's check out some of these tools real quickly. Um, you can see the major associate tools in um, the, the tabs up top. Uh, to start off, the, link, the links and banners uh, tab has links to build static links uh, as well as banners. Uh, static links are simple text links or product links, which is a product image and a text link. Uh, banners are simple static uh, uh, Flash or JavaScript banners that drive traffic to Amazon. Banners are fairly easy to create, but they're uh, pretty static and uh, they stay the same over a period of time. Finally, one addition to uh, the Associates Toolkit you see right at the bottom there, something called the Site Stripe. Well, the Site Stripe is the latest addition to our tool set, and if you're signed in as an associate while you're browsing Amazon.com, you can uh, pretty much instantaneously create links to, uh, uh, to any product while you're on Amazon. So let's say you're browsing a product detail page for a camera. Uh, you can use a Site Stripe to get, a, to get the code for creating a, a static link or a product link right off from Amazon without ever leaving that, that page. So that's pretty cool and a very productive uh, tool. A store. A store is a personalized storefront. Your viewers can browse through Amazon products, add them to their cart, all while on your site. The only time they leave your site and come to Amazon is when they're ready to make, uh, uh, when they're ready to check out effectively. Um, all the, uh, the rest of the time they're on your site. So that's a very personalized experience uh, for your viewers. And finally, uh, the latest addition to the Associates Toolset is widgets, the subject of our talk today. Uh, so what exactly are widgets? Well, widget is short for web gadget, and um, they're a window into specific Amazon functionality. Uh, your viewers can access and use those features while still on your site. Widgets are typically more feature-rich and more interactive than traditional banners and other link types, and they sometimes use sophisticated techniques to uh, determine what set of products to show in, in, uh, in the widgets themselves. Also, widgets are highly customizable, and they're available in a variety of form factors, color themes, to match your site style. So this is what the widgets tab looks like. As you can see, there are a number of different widgets that you see here, and there are many more that you don't see here, that are below the fold. Uh, for example, there, on the first row, there's the auto part finder widget that lets you search for automotive parts from Amazon's auto store. Uh, and you can search for products by car, make, model, and year. So something very specific to the auto parts uh, store. And then there's the MP3 clip, uh, clips widget that you see in the second row. The MP3 clips widget is special in the sense that it lets your viewers preview music as well as album art while still on your site. So you can sa they can sample music. And uh, they only move to Amazon once they're ready to make a purchase. So that's pretty powerful. 
Um, and then you see the deals widget up top on the, on the first row on the third column. And the, the deals widget basically lets you show the latest and greatest promotions from across Amazon uh, product categories. It also lets you show lightning deals or special deals from Amazon. So um, that widget shows a discounted products. Now, you're probably wondering, with so many widgets to choose from, what the most effective widget for you is. Well, hang on. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be going over that uh, later in the presentation. But before that, um, I'd like to show you uh, an actual widget. So I have a static screenshot here, but I thought because I have uh, an internet connection here, maybe I can actually show you a live demo. OK. Well, it looks like we're in presenter mode right now, so it might take me a few minutes. Well, you know what? I, th I think I'll just use the screenshot because I can't get the uh, browser to come up. Maybe later on I can actually give you a quick demo. What I want to illustrate is basically how easy it is for, um, for you to create and then deploy a widget on your site. Uh, so we'll just use a screenshot right here. Um, so what I want to do is look at a typical widget and tell you how it differs from a, a banner. Um, and what advantages widgets provide over uh, classical banners. So here's a search widget that you see here. And I'm searching for the key phrase, Sean Collins. Uh, now, before creating this widget, I had no idea Sean was a published author and a pretty successful one at that. Uh, in fact, this book that you see in the widget here, it has a four and a half star rating on Amazon.com. And what you also see on the widget is that the, your end viewer can search for and see results in line in the widget. So for example, uh, for the specific widget shown here, you see two results here. Um, and uh, you also see a lot of product information. So for example, you see the product title, the product image, as well as the customer rating and reviews, as well as links to uh, buy the book uh, in physical copy, a uh, physical copy of the book, or even download it from the Kindle. So there's a lot of information up front. Um, you'll also know that this widget has been customized. Uh, so it's a certain form factor that's height and width as well as a certain color theme. And you could adjust the color theme to suit your site. So it's very, very flexible what you can do with the widget. So in short, there's enough information on this widget for your viewer to make a purchasing decision. And these points here just illustrate um, what I'm talking about. You, don't, you can view the search results in line. You can view rating price information. Uh, there's also uh, the concept of a default search term with the search widget. What the default search term does is basically it allows you to pre-populate the search field. And when the widget first renders, it'll render with the uh, default search term. So effectively, you can personalize the widget um, for every page. So let's say you, pay, you place this page on a, on, a, on a page talking about Sean Collins. I'd uh, populate it with the keyword Sean Collins. And you can personalize it uh, for other pages by selecting a suitable default search term. OK, so with so many tools available on Amazon Associates, you're probably wondering, you know, why use widgets? What advantages do widgets provide over other uh, classical links and banners? Um, well, here's a, for starters, you can display your product information in really cool and neat looking formats. Um, so for example, you don't need to use text links all the time. You could choose between a slideshow or a carousel widget to uh, showcase your products more creatively. And your users will love you for that. And you probably will get better click-through rates depending on your product selection and uh, the styling of the actual widget. So effectively, widgets let you discover products in new ways. For example, um, you can actually listen to music on the MP3 Clips widget. That's not something that you can do with a traditional banner. Uh, the movie and TV show preview widgets let you preview actual video uh, footage of movies or TV shows. Uh, the deals widget, like I told you, lets you showcase deals. Um, so a lot of very personalized content on the widget. So eventually what you get is that instead of using a generic link for regardless of product type, widgets let you advertise each product in a very unique way so that your viewer, your end viewer, can experience that product in the most suitable manner. So for example, if you're showing, showcasing music, you can actually preview music in the MP3 Clips video. Or if you're uh, showcasing uh, actual video, you can use the TV and movie show preview uh, widget. So uh, the, the key point to note here is that you can use the widget that showcases the product in the most suitable manner. The next point to note is that you can express yourself through widgets, because widgets aren't simply ads. They're a way for you to connect with your audience. That's very key to remember. They're a way for you to connect with your audience. And uh, by personalizing the widgets, uh, we've actually seen viewers not be annoyed with the ads, but actually enjoy the, themselves using the carousel widget, 
are using the slideshow widget. So it's a way for you to reach out to your audience and tell them you know, how you feel about certain products. The third point to note here is that with widgets, you bring a piece of Amazon to your site. Since they bring up a lot of product information up front, what ends up happening is that you lure the most prospective customers or from your site to Amazon, so you get better conversion rates with widgets. Also, the last point to note here, widgets blur the, uh, the line between ad and content. They aren't fully ads, but they aren't fully content either. Depending on how you customize your widget, so the product selection you use, um, the styling that you use for the widget, widgets can actually complement your content. So they aren't purely ads. You can use them as content. Okay, so you're wondering, all this stuff is really great and neat for the end user. What is in it for you, the publisher? Okay, so all these benefits for the end viewer translates into benefits for you, the publisher. Because what you get are higher click-through rates, better conversion, and by expressing yourself through widgets, you tend to build a loyal, uh, a loyal user base. Your viewers come back to check out the products that you recommend, and they stay on your site longer. And also by bringing Amazon functionality to your site, you tend not to lose viewers too much, so they don't go about clicking on every product link that they encounter. Instead, they discover the products in your site, and they only move to Amazon once they're closer to that buying decision. So that's better conversion. So net-net, all, all this results in longer and more productive user sessions, and in the end, it basically gives you, gets you more money. So all these points are pretty important to note here. Um, since we're doing this conversational uh, style, do you have any questions uh, about this? Any questions on the benefits of widgets? Or Okay, let's hear. Can we have your name uh, for the record? My name is Rusty. Do you uh, offer Amazon Marketplace products or just Amazon stock and ship products through your widgets? Um, so if I get your question correctly, you're asking uh, whether, we, uh, showcase, whether we allow you to showcase uh, third-party seller products in the widgets, and the answer is yes you can showcase any products. And um, all the products that are available to you uh, via natural search on Amazon, you can uh, showcase them in the, in the widget as, as well. Great. That's a good question. Any, any other questions? Great. So hopefully by now I've impressed upon you uh, the importance of widgets. And if you aren't already using widgets right now, hopefully I've convinced you that you should at the very least give it a shot. Okay, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you some best practices, some insider tips, if you will, on how to get the most out of your widgets. To start off, with so many widgets available, it's very important that you choose the best widget for the job. Secondly, you want to choose the size and the best placement for your widget. Where should you place it? Should you place it center of page, sidebar? Where should you put it? So the, the exact widget placement is, is, is super critical. Thirdly, using widgets as a self-expression tool rather than, simp uh, rather than simply as an ad. So when you view them as a self-expression tool and personalize them as such, the, th the theme of the widget, the comments that you add to the widget, and so forth, those, uh, all, those, all those things that you do to personalize the widget, those work in your favor and result in higher click-through rates. Finally, and I can't, say, I can't overemphasize this point, changing widget content regularly is key to improving click-through rates. Since, and this is especially true for widgets because, they're, because of the dynamic nature. Your users come to expect you, uh, you to change the widget content regularly. They wouldn't expect that from a banner, but from a widget where you're personalizing it with your comments and so on, they expect you to uh, regularly update your widget. Since these, uh, since these tips are so important, I'm gonna go over each of them individually. Let's look at the first one. So how do you go about selecting the best widget for the job? Well, the first thing you have to realize is that you've got to do what's best for your site. There's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all solution. I mean, you've got to ask yourself questions like, do I run a product review site? Well, in that case, the My Favorites widget or the Search widget is your best bet. Or do you have a personal blog that you'd like to monetize? Well, in that case, you'd probably want to try out the Wishlist widget or the Carousel widget, a personalized Carousel widget or a My Favorites widget. Finally, if you run a media site, for example, a movie review site or a music review site, then you want to use one of our digital products, for example, the MP3 Clips widget or the TV and movie show preview widget.
Okay, so what's the best placement for your widget? Well, let's start with the widget size. There are three points to make here. Center of page widgets typically work best when you have one-off or highly topical uh, content. Okay, that's not good. Um, can I get some help up here? Oh, great. You know, there was a live update going on, and he kept turning that off. So just give me a few minutes while we get this back up. Yeah, while we're waiting, let's have some more questions. So uh, does, does Amazon, any of these widgets, do they have a contextual as aspect to them? Or is it kind of the affiliate would decide the keyword themselves? Yeah, sure. Yeah, great question. And actually, the answer is yes, we do have contextual support. So for example, there's the Omakase widget, which you can add to your blog or your page very easily. All you do is uh, put, a, put some script on your, on your page, and we crawl your site and figure out the content and then show relevant products. Even with some of the other widgets, uh, we allow you to handpick or use some automated selection. So for example, you could create a bestsellers carousel widget, and you can drill down in the specific uh, category that you'd like to choose. I'll be covering some of that in my presentation, but that's a really good question. So yeah, you have a choice of handpick or let Amazon decide. Great question. Yeah. Uh, regarding the carousel widget, what happens if a product is out of stock or unavailable, or do, do pre-order products, like pre-ordering books, uh, be available through the widgets? Um, that's, again, a good question. I'm not quite certain what happens when, you want to, uh, when there are certain products on pre-order. My, my hunch is that they won't show up until they're stock, uh, but uh, maybe we can talk later on. I can find, find out about that and clarify that exact question, yeah. So while, while this is being set up, oh, we have another question. Let's hear it. I just have a question about the Amazon Marketplace. You said you do put third-party uh, products in your ads. Um, how does that work since then the, the person, the third party, is getting the money and you're keeping commission and paying out additional commission? So does that end up uh, actually resulting in less revenue for the, pu uh, the publisher, the, um, your associates? Uh, well, associate would just get a uh, straightforward, you know, referral rate on the on the sales price. So that wouldn't hurt the end associate. Okay. Uh, the exact way it works out between Amazon and the seller is, is something that's uh, that's different and maybe not even that very relevant for the publisher. Gotcha. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. No problem. I know. Just just cancel out. Uh, 16. Uh, uh, I have a follow-up to the contextual question. Yeah. So if um, you come back with a keyword from contextual that doesn't have any relevant content, do you do any user targeting, or do you do a fallback keyword? Or yeah, so we fall that? back to top sellers. So for example, if, uh, and you can customize. For example, in the Omakase widget, you can say, I only want to show books. So we'll try to show uh, contextually relevant books. And if uh, there is no match, then we'll just fall back to top selling books. And how about uh, user targeting? Do you guys do any user targeting within your widgets? Yeah, that's right. So we have started some uh, user behavioral based uh, targeting, and that's still an experimental phase. Uh, but yeah, we do that. We do that to some extent. In a sense, it's a, it's a it's a it's a weighted average of a lot of different factors. Uh, user targeting is one of them. Contextual relevance is another. And barring all these um, um, factors, if we if we don't fit, find a match in uh, you know using any one of these factors, then we fall back to top sellers. Yeah, we're having a lot of problems with this computer. Hopefully, we'll have it sorted out in the next few minutes. Um, while, uh, um, sorry, what's your name? 
Justin is uh, trying this out. All right, we have another. One more follow up. Yeah, please, please. More questions, the better. So, say you have a very wide site and you want to have widgets on like 100,000, you know, a million different pages. Is there an actual API defined for every widget that we can kind of screw? Perfect. Great. You know what? I anticipated all these questions there in the presentation, but you know what? I'll answer them up front since we're waiting and we're probably running out of time. Um, yes, there is a programmatic way to uh, address the exact user scenario that you mentioned. Uh, and in fact, we released a tool called Widget Source. Um, I'm not, I don't think I have time to do a demo today, but um, what Widget Source lets you do is get complete programmatic control over the widget look and feel, the exact products that you add to your widget. In fact, a lot of users are actually using this. Uh, there's a site called Sound Unwound, which is an Amazon.com owned music wiki, and they use Widget Source to place literally hundreds of music clip widgets uh, programmatically on artist pages. Uh, so all they do, they have a database of uh, artists to music track mappings, and they use a Widget Source to place MP3 clips widgets on each and every artist page. So it's very, you know, it's very easy for them and highly contextual for the end viewer. So make a note of that Widget Source. Right now, we offer widget source for a handful of products, which we feel are you know, most suited for this kind of uh, usage. Uh, but as we get user feedback, we might extend that to uh, other widgets as well. It's OK if you don't get in presenter mode. I can run with the notes. OK. All right, and I'm just going to. Uh... Yeah, just project it. Sahid? Yeah. Are, are there. Hi. Um... Are there widgets for top sellers and categories and subcategories? Yes, there are. So uh, for example, if you choose the carousel widget, or um, let's see, um, using a widget source, you can even do it for some of the other widgets. But for example, for the carousel widget, yeah, you can choose uh, to either hand pick your products and add them to the widget. Or you can say, show me best sellers or new releases or most gifted, any one of the you know, various automated options. And you can drill down you know, very deep in the Amazon hierarchy of products. We have a pretty huge taxonomy. You can say, show me, you know, I don't know, architecture books uh, that are written by authors from A to F. I mean, just uh, to pull out an example out of the air. Uh, and it'll show best-selling products or new releases, uh, you know, for that specific selection. And will those bestsellers update hourly? Uh, yes, exactly. Bestsellers update hourly. That's correct. And your widget will always be up-to-date. You don't need to do anything. Good. Okay. Thank you. All right. You can just start from there and I'll flip through. Yeah, are we there? Perfect. All right, so we were here. Hopefully this time around we don't have any interruptions. Okay, so I was talking about the best available placement. How do you figure out what size widget to use and where to put it on your site? Um, the center of page widget, like I said, is very useful when you have one-off and very topical uh, content. So for example, you went to a Coldplay concert and uh, you, you just blogged about it. Uh, well, what you can do is use a 250 by 250 pixel MB3 clips widget. That's a center of page, you know, squarish looking MB3 clips widget and that'll probably do well for you. Uh, it might not do so well in the banner or sidebar formats. What works in banner or sidebar uh, uh, locations are basically uh, products that are relevant over a longer period of time and that are relevant over many pages because uh, sidebar uh, widgets stay throughout, the, uh, throughout different pages. So for example, if you're running a gaming console site, you probably want to add a Ferris wheel style carousel widget show showcasing best selling products from the video games category. That'll probably do better for you. Uh, finally, one note on free sized widgets. Um, if you have a lot of control over this, your site layout, then I recommend using uh, non, non IV uh, sizes for the widgets. Because what happens is that that reduces ad blindness and that basically uh, leads your viewers to engage with the, uh, with the widget on a you know, higher probability basis. So they're more likely to engage with your widget if uh, they're non, non IV sizes. Okay. So uh, a quick note on the different ad sizes supported by widgets. Uh, some widgets are free size in the sense that you can use a slider to uh, change the height and the width of the widget. Uh, other widgets have preset IAB sizes, so they are available in a variety of different IAB sizes and you select from a list. Moving forward, our goal at Amazon Associates is to uh, provide the most popular widgets in all the IAB sizes that make sense so that you can choose uh, a size that works, works for you. 
Right, so the other point that I'd made about is about personalizing uh, uh, the widget content. Um, personalized content goes a far way in, in improving uh, your user click-through rate. And what happens is that when you customize your widget with user comments, your viewers tend to identify with your, with your content and in, in your widget and tend to click through your products a lot more. So in this case, for, there, there are two ways to personalize. For example, in this case, I've added user comments to the product selection. So on the left-hand side, what you see is a slideshow widget showcasing the award-winning uh, novel, The White Tiger. And the user here has added a comment, read this cover to cover last night. And on the right-hand side, you see an MB3 Clips widget uh, showcasing a Coldplay album, Viva La Vida, and that has a user comment. I just downloaded this Coldplay album from Amazon's MP3 store, and I've been listening to it all day long. So with such compelling comments, your users are more likely to click through on the actual products. So basically what you've got to remember is that your viewers are more likely to engage with and click through on your, uh, on your products when uh, you've endorsed the products is essentially with user comments. Now, there's another way to, um, to personalize your widget. So if you don't have time to add individual comments to each and every product, what you can do is simply use a personalized widget title. Just choosing a personalized widget title reduces ad blindness and basically leads your viewers to click through and engage with the widget. So if you don't have the, the, the time to add comments to each and every product, just, just update the the widget title is something that's relevant. For example, on the left-hand side, you see here an MP3 Clips widget that says, my favorite albums, albums of 2008. And on the right-hand side, you have a carousel widget with uh, my Christmas wish list. So what you have to effectively remember is that your viewers are more likely to engage with a widget that has a personalized widget title. OK, so this was the point on you know, hand-picked products or uh, let Amazon decide. So there are two ways, just stepping back, there are two ways that a user can add products to a widget. Uh, one is uh, to handpick, so that is search the Amazon catalog and select the products that you want to add. And the other way is you let Amazon decide. So you can choose Amazon bestsellers, new releases, most gifted items, and so on. So the big question is, you know, do you use handpicked products or let Amazon decide? Well, the quick answer is that handpicked wins or automated selection any day. So if you have the time, then spend some time to actually go through the product set, choose the products that are relevant to your content, Basically, you increase your chances of a click-through that way. But even if you don't have uh, the time for hand-picking products, what you can do is select a uh, relevant product title or even select relevant product categories. So as, I, as I was explaining earlier, if you choose to create a carousel widget and you don't have time to hand-pick products, then choose a product category that's, that matches what's on your site. So if you have a site showcasing toys, then create a bestsellers carousel choosing the toys subcategory, and we'll show the best-selling products from the to toys category, or even something below the toys category. And by being relevant, you've increased your chances of a click-through. And one point on, on, on categories is that you should change your categories frequently. So for example, if your page content has changed, then go back and change the product category that, that was chosen initially. One really cool thing about Amazon widgets is that if you're signed into your associate's account while you're creating these widgets, then all the widgets are actually stored in your My Widgets store. So you can always come back and re-edit your widgets. And you don't ever need to go back to your, to your site and update the code. Once you update them in your, in your My Widgets store, they're automatically up, updated all across the board. So that's really powerful. Okay, we skipped through I've got a, few a question, slides. if you don't mind. Yeah, please. Um, have you ever had anybody in, uh, embed your widgets into like white paper PDFs, and do they work? I'm sorry, can you please repeat the question? Have you ever had anybody embed some of your widgets into PDFs? Into PDFs? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think we've ever tried that. I mean, uh, we've had people take screenshots and add them to PDFs, but not, not the exact you know, interactive widget. Can you even do that? Can you add HTML or Flash content to a PDF? Sure you can, yeah. Oh, great. So maybe we should try it out. No, I'm sorry. We haven't, we've never tried that. Okay. So I can't give you an exact answer right now, but maybe we should try that out and get back to you. Cool. Okay. Yeah? Uh, one more question. Yeah, do please. Have, do you guys do any A-B testing with uh, the same widget and the same placement just so uh, aff affiliates can see the difference of performance between the same placement with multiple widgets? 
Yeah, so uh, we haven't done exact A-B testing. Uh, uh, precise A-B testing would be to use the same widget on the same page and you know, try different placements. But we have aggregated data on uh, what works and what doesn't. So what I was pointing out earlier, so we've seen across a variety of sites, when you have topical content, then that works best as center of page widgets, so squarish or rectangular looking widgets. And when the, uh, when the relevance spans you know, over a period of time or across pages, then what works best is basically sidebar or banner ads. Uh, banner widgets. So uh, we have data to support that. Yeah. Um, if the user is signed into Amazon or has the cookie, is there actually one-click functionality on any of the widgets? When you say one-click functionality, one what? One-click to purchase. Um, so uh, due to a security restriction, one thing that we did change is you know, clicking on the Buy button does not directly add the product to your cart. Rather, it takes you to the detail page where you can then proceed to buy the product on Amazon. Um, so that's, that's basically it. Okay, so this is uh, the thing that I was talking about. Widget source for power users. So if you're a power user and you tend to use widgets on a you know, much uh, more regular basis, um, or you simply want to integrate widgets more closely with your website experience, then the best thing for you to do is use widget source. Widget source is basically a programmatic way, and I'll show you an example shortly, uh, for you to embed widgets on any page programmatically. So, and widget source gives you complete control over the widget look and feel, the size, uh, the exact product selection shown, uh, and you can do all of this stuff programmatically. So theoretically, for example, you could tie in a carousel widget with a, with a database of Amazon products, and every day your carousel would show a different set of products. Uh, you have to remember that widget source is kind of targeted towards more programmatically inclined associates, so it does take a little bit more effort to, uh, uh, to implement. But the uh, net result is that by being highly relevant and by frequently changing, you've increased your chances of a click-through. And we've seen some users do really cool mashups using widget source. I mean, they've integrated widgets like, like I was giving an example, uh, Sound Unwound has done a music site that uses the MP3 clips widget, uh, widget using widget source. There are also other uses. So now, as with all other ad types, you know, when you're starting off, you initially want to experiment and measure what works for you and what's not working for you before uh, you know, making a conclusive judgment. Uh, you should experiment with different product types, with different widget selections, with different widget placements, and see what works best for you. And once you've hit on that winning combination, you can sit pretty and see the money roll in. And we've seen a lot of associates do that. We see them, you know, the same site, trying out the widget in the sidebar, in center of page, and once they've hit on that you know, winning combination, we've seen them rotate through different products and different widgets sometimes uh, in the exact same placements. And th that does really well for them. Um, so now that I've covered all the major pieces, uh, one thing I want to do is show you some examples of what I consider stellar widget placements. Uh, this first example is uh, a site called 101 Cookbooks, and it's one of my favorites. So 101 Cookbooks is a cooking recipe site that I really admire. Aside from the uh, you know, tantalizing and delicious <laughs> recipes, it has stunning food photography. And the other thing that I really like about the site is the widget placement here. Can somebody point out where the widget here is? Exactly, it's in the sidebar here. So basically this author has customized this widget to death <laughs> effectively. They've changed the widget size to suit their sidebar. They've even chosen a, a theme that removes the border, gives, gives it a white background so that it blends in with the page. So effectively they've, you know, the, for the end user, it's indistinguishable from the actual content and it's highly relevant because I think this particular example actually gives you the ingredients required to prepare this specific dish, cookies in this example. And uh, the author has also added highly you know, appropriate user comments to each product. So by personalizing the widget and using product selection that's highly relevant, uh, she's increased her chances of a click-through. So this is a really great example of what a good widget looks like. Aha, uh -huh, Sound Unwound, this is the example that I was talking about. Sound Unwound, like I said, is an Amazon-owned music wiki. It's a sister site. And they have an, AMS, uh, an MP3 clips widget here. So for example, this particular page is showing, uh, is an artist page for Mia Dyson. If, like me, you've never heard of Mia Dyson before, you probably want to sample her music. And you can do that with the MP3 clips widget at the bottom right here. Now, like I said, this widget has been placed using widget source, so it's very trivial for them to do. And the exact code that puts this widget in place here is this right here. I'm not going to ask you to read through the code, but just look at the line in bold. It says amz and widget under, uh, dot ASIN. ASIN is a unique identifier for every Amazon product. 
And they've just changed this ASIN. So on every page, they have this exact same code that they've placed programmatically. And all they've done is rotate through the ASIN field. And they've literally placed this widget on hundreds of pages uh, using a backend database you know, of artist to ASIN mapping. So this is a really effective use of a widget source. Now just for change, here is a Japanese PSP gaming site. Now this, widget or, uh, this website author has used the deals widget that you see on the left sidebar here. Um, and the reason it's so effective is that they've chosen the, uh, the best sellers uh, deals widget, sorry, the deals widget, and they've, they've chosen the, the deals widget, and they've chosen a category, a subcategory that's highly relevant for the site. So, so since this site talks about PSP uh, gaming, uh, all the discounts and the products that appear in this deals widget are basically PSP video games. So by being highly relevant, this website author has increased his chance of a click-through. Okay, with that said, there are some points to note about what you shouldn't do uh, while using widgets. So the first thing is you don't want to plaster your page with tons and tons of widgets. Now, widgets are highly interactive and very rich, and that comes at a small price. And basically, the price that you pay is based, the, the widget takes us slightly longer to load than traditional banners or static banners. Now, if you plaster your site with Amazon or, uh, widgets or other widgets, what, what ends up happening is your page takes longer to load, and you end up losing customers. So you know, experiment. See the number of widgets that works for your page for a, a, a reasonable bandwidth rate, and then go with that. Secondly, if you, if you tried a widget or a product selection and it's not worked for you, then don't give up. Try a different widget or a different product selection or a different placement, and keep on varying that combination until you hit that you know, winning combination and then go with that uh, for the rest of uh, the site's duration. Finally, one thing you don't want to do is replace all your links and banners with widgets. One, thing, one key point to remember is that widgets complements all the other tools that we offer. So in some cases, you know, it makes best sense to use a simple text link. In other cases, it might make sense to use a simple banner. So you should always experiment with links, banners, and widgets and see what the right combination for you is. All right, so uh, one quick thing that I want to show you is what's coming up with widgets. This is still tentative so since we are still developing a roadmap, but you can expect some of these things here. If this works. Here we go. So one of the things that we are going to offer in 2009 are more customization options. So for example, you'll be able to customize your color themes and the exact widget size. Like I said, we're trying to provide our most popular widgets in all the sizes that make sense in all the IAB sizes, that makes sense. Um, the second thing is that we're trying to streamline the widget creation process. So for example, let's say you've created a carousel widget using a set of hand-picked products, and now you want to experiment with the slideshow widget. Then we're going to make it easy for you to convert that slideshow or the carousel into a My Favorites widget, for example, using the same product selection in a one-click manner. Today, you'd have to go and search through Amazon and ha handpick all those products again and build another widget. So we're trying to streamline that creation process. Finally, what we want to do is integrate widgets on that site stripe idea that I mentioned earlier. So today you can create you know, links to simple products, simple product links uh, while on Amazon.com. In the future, we envisage what will happen is you can create or add to widgets that al already exist while on Amazon. I and mean, let's say you're browsing Amazon and you know of a widget that you've placed on so-and-so site and you like this product, using the, widget site uh, use using the widgets option on the site stripe, you'd be able to add that product to the widget in a one-click manner. All right, so with that, we come to the end of the presentation. I think we skipped over one slide that I'd like to show you. Yeah, if there's one thing that you want to remember and that you want to write down, it's this URL, uh, widgets.amazon.com. It's possible to visit the widgets website by clicking on the widgets tab once you're logged in, but if you want to directly access the, the site, you can write you know, widgets.amazon.com in your uh, address, uh, address bar, and you will be taken to widgets straight away. So with that, that's pretty much the end of the presentation. You, I already had some great questions in the interim. Um, do you have any further questions? Anything about the widgets, what works best? Um, any other best practices that you'd like to, you know, to hear from me? By the way, here's my uh, email address. And um, we have another question, but while, while he's asking that question, you can write this down and feel free to shoot me an email or use the feedback uh, form on the Amazon Associates site. 
and I personally will get back to you. I read all the widgets related emails uh, myself. Uh, so this may be a stupid question, but um, Cl ClickRiver is your on-site advertising platform. Do you, are you guys doing anything between Amazon Associates and ClickRiver? Um, that's a good question, and in fact, I work, uh, I, I know the, the product manager that runs the ClickRiver program. Um, right now, we don't do anything with them. Uh, ClickRiver has gone through some iterations. For example, initially, they used to advertise products on Amazon. Um, now they've moved into this mode where they uh, advertise complementary services. So let's say you're buying a plasma TV on Amazon. What you'll, see is our, what, what, what you'll see is maybe plasma TV maintenance services or installation services. Uh, today, we don't work closely with them, but you, you never know. Yeah. Great. Have you used ClickRiver in the past, by the way? OK. Cool. Any other questions on widgets or maybe even outside of widgets, since we have a couple of minutes? This is the last question. No, please. So uh, Make... the widgets, it looked on, I was weird looking on the laptop here. Are they mostly all Flash implemented, or do you have any that are just kind of like JavaScript AJAX implementation? Because, yeah. you yeah. know, Flash can be kind of slow on some platforms. Yeah, and, yeah. good. Uh, so we have a combination of JavaScript and Flash widgets. So does it just kind of depend on if it's a carousel versus, uh, you know, a simpler display? Yeah, type? exactly, exactly. So some, some widget functionality is easier to implement in JavaScript, easy enough to implement in JavaScript. For some of the more complicated stuff, uh, you know, it's not easy to do in JavaScript, especially in a you know, cross-browser compatible manner. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we use, for example, for the carousel widget, like you pointed out, we use the Flash, we use Flash. Uh, whereas for the My Favorites widget, we have uh, you know, JavaScript version of the widget. Okay, just, it just leads me to one other one. Yeah. Say a, a new edition of a book comes out, such as you know, like we have a widget that's just textbooks for uh, you know, computer science majors. Second edition, then the third edition's in six months the next semester. Would the widget automatically move over to the newest edition, or do I have to come in and, and continually kind of manage the products that I'm displaying on the widget? Yeah, you'd have to manage it manually today. We don't have a process in place for upgrading, for example, the, the, the newest version of the book. Okay. But that's a good feedback maybe for us to consider. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. What kind of skill sets do you need to be able to use, uh, utilize widget source? Uh, so for widget source, I'd say you'd need, uh, at the very least, a basic knowledge of JavaScript, as well as, uh, since you'll be tying it to some backend database, typically, uh, you need someone with database knowledge. So whether that, that database is Access for you know, Microsoft Access in the most simplest case, or something like an Oracle or MySQL, um, you need database knowledge as well as some basic JavaScript knowledge. So with the two of that, I think you should, uh, you should be able to use widget source. Right, thanks. No problem. Hi, I was wondering if there's any way that you've been able to find to make widgets work in email, whether it's with iframe, obviously JavaScript is challenging, et cetera. Yeah, we've thought about that. Uh, we haven't implemented anything yet, uh, but that's an idea that's on the table. Today you can't, uh, you, you, I don't think you can add um, a widget to a simple email, a simple HTML email. Certainly you can't add the Flash widget, uh, since I think there are security restrictions, but you could think potentially of adding a JavaScript widget to an email, but we haven't tried that yet. So it, it's usually stripped in email. Sorry? JavaScript is usually stripped out of emails. OK, JavaScript is used. So then in that case, the JavaScript wouldn't work either. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I have, by the way, personally seen interesting uses of uh, widget source and widgets. For example, on WidgetBox, I've seen users uh, uh, add our widgets to WidgetBox so that they're easily shareable. Um, so that, that's, that's, a user, that's a use case I, I didn't really think of before, uh, before we put, put it out there. All right, looks like we're done with the, some minutes to spare. So uh, I'll be around until after, you know, after this presentation. So if you have any you know, questions one-on-one, -on -one, feel free to contact me and talk to me. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot.